Hey guys, how's it going, Rich here, and welcome back to the episode of Cards and Castles TV commentary. It's been hot. It's, it's, it's been a hot minute, hasn't it, since we've done a TV commentary here on the channel? Ever since the emergence of casting conflicts, I've kind of put TV commentary on the back burner for a bit to kind of let the casting conflicts grow and develop as a series here on the channel. But I kind of want to make this TV commentary to kind of assure you guys that the series isn't necessarily dead. I've just been kind of putting it onto the back burner again to let the casting conflicts grow and develop a little bit here. Uh, so. Yeah, with that being said, before we jump into said match, though, fair disclaimer, uh, it's, been a w it's been a bit of a while since I've done one of these, so my commentary might not be, you know, the standard up to par that it kind of usually is the fast pace that comes with the, uh, with the uh, Cards TV. Because, of course, TV commentary, uh, different from actually casting the live uh, matches. So, hopefully I don't sound too bad in these. Again, um, hopefully I'll regain my, uh, my standards once I've done a little bit more of these in time. So, uh, yeah, with that being said, hopefully let's jump into match number one and see if my commentary skills uh, have, you know, stuck with me. My, my t cards TV casting skills. Uh, not necessarily casting in general, but the casting skills of cards TV. We'll see if those two remain. Anyway, on to the match. Alright, folks, and match number one is going to be Drowinger taking on Krios, a Warlock Pirate versus a Ninja Warlock. I assume we're definitely going to be seeing some Awaken out of Krios, but curious to see what Drowinger brings to the match here. Uh, we see Krios has got that Sleeping Dojo, so yeah, another sign that he's got the Awakening uh, deck here. Obviously, not going to throw out the Soldier uh, on Krios' side just yet, because I think he wants to establish Sleeping Dojo. Does give Drowinger the opportunity to coin into Hovel, so potentially a Swarm deck here. Uh, very likely that it might be, because of course, uh, Pirate Warlock has access to both Hovel and the Altar, so we'll see if that's going to be the case here. Meanwhile, uh, Kraya is going to go for the Sunflower Soldier combination, going to be able to maybe get some Awakening draw, and of course protect the castle with the block of the uh, Elvish Thief there. Uh, we will see a mugging though onto that uh, Soldier, so no additional draw for Kraya. Meanwhile, uh, Ronin is going to be the card that comes out here, not taking out the uh, Elvish Thief just yet, giving him an opportunity to hit Castle potentially, but we'll see if that's going to be the case. Uh, Draugr, though, bolts the uh, Sleeping Dojo away, so nice to cut off the draw. And it must mean he has some way to combat this incoming Ronin, then, if he doesn't go for the Ronin takedown. Because, uh, I mean, Ronin is going to be pretty hard to deal with. I mean, 4-4, four, four, especially if you have just the tokens. Uh, it doesn't really help that, uh, you know, what's the word? That you have the uh, power to kind of take that on. Uh, but we'll see what uh, Draugr has. Maybe a different burn, who knows. Anyway, after Krios burned the Hovel and threw out the Masuda, Drowinger goes for a Cannoneer play, which is, you know, fine. I don't see an issue with that. Masuda going to take out one of the Rats. Mage Apprentice coming up as well, um, followed up by the Sniper. I guess Sniper followed by the Apprentice, if that's the right way to do it. Uh, meanwhile, Cannoneer takes out the Masuda. Cannonball Barrage being played, not uh, a card that you don't really see too often, so that does stun all of Kress's remaining units there, and of course Rat doing a little bit of chip damage since Ronin can't respond after being stunned. Uh, sacrifice comes down from the Mage Apprentice, uh, or Sacrifice from the Mage Apprentice, and then played on said Apprentice. Kills off the Rat, not what he was, I think, hoping for. Meanwhile, uh, plays his remaining cards here, which is both, I believe, Secret Dragon and another Soldier. We'll see how Dragon responds to this now. Trap card activated that will be the Secret Dragon. Uh, gets a big boy in the form of the Fire Drake there, but Horseman gonna try and clip it off. Doesn't get it, but still enough to take down the Fire Drake regardless. Followed up by the Prince, so it looks like Krios will be able to take down the uh, Cannoneer here, even if it is going to be uh, a bit of a heavy price for him to pay. So Sniper there, we see him take down, uh, or at least trade with him to weaken, and then of course Soldier del uh, delivers the finishing blow. Although Drowinger, again, has options here to deal with uh, this incoming Soldier, White Knight Armor going to be a great way to do so. And of course, Krios not throwing down the Meditation on that Soldier because he knew it was probably not going to survive. And then Krios, even now, not really doing too well uh, with these draws here. Sleeping Dojo, after drawing that Meditation, he needed units, but I don't think uh, he, you know, really pulled any in that scenario. Well, he obviously didn't pull any. And now he does pull a unit, but ultimately not going to be enough considering that uh, the Imp, Plus, Meditation uh, wouldn't be enough to kind of kill the Vord. And even then, um, 
uh, Drowinger would have probably easily burned off the imp before meditation could be played. And even then, Arcanon probably would have diverted the meditation onto a different target. So, a not very winnable situation, which means Kras does surrender in the match, giving it to Drowinger uh, for our first matchup here. Very interesting match. Um, I think the Cannonball Barrage is an interesting choice, even though, I mean... I don't really know if it impacted it too much. I think probably what really did impact the match, though, was that early burn from uh, from Drowinger. Hitting the dojo and cutting off a lot of Kriyas' draw, I think it's very important to do that in an Awakened deck. Uh, if they don't have the ability to kind of refill their hand or, you know, regain their resources, it's going to be tough for them to move forward, especially in, you know, a deck that has the options to burn and directly remove some of the other threats that the deck has, you know, um, like Ronin or Golem. Even though, I guess Golem wouldn't really be affected by Burn, except for, like, the wider ones, the AoE, like Flamestorm and Dragon's Fire. Anyway, I, di I digress. Let's go ahead and jump into match number two, though, and see what that match has to offer. Again, good match by both these players, and yeah, let's see what the uh, next match has. Alright, and our next matchup is going to be the one, uh, well... I don't know if it's the 1-1 one, one or the 1 just followed up by the number 1, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, he's going to be taking on the Feeble, uh, not the Feeble, he will be taking on Feeble, just Feeble, uh, with Pirate Crusader while Feeble's rocking the Ninja Viking. I don't know why that was such a hard intro for me to do. Anyway, uh, I hit the pause button. Pog. Uh, anyway, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started into the matchup here. We're going to see a pass, it looks like, by turn 1. Same with turn 2 from Feeble. We'll see if the 1 has a play there. Power Crusader, I would assume, has to have an early play here, right? No, no. Looks like he doesn't. Uh, so Feeble goes ahead, plays the Wizard, because of course, you know, he's got free reign on the board here. And the 1, gotta have a turn 3 move, and doesn't look like that's the case either. Kind of curious, especially considering Pirate Crusader is, you know... They can supply an early game. I'm just surprised we haven't seen that. Anyway, backstab onto the Dragon Knight, it looks like, followed by a main deck Curse of Exhaustion. Not sure how I feel about that, considering that cards like Armory and, like we see here, Fat Bard completely, completely negate that curse. So, again, very curious to see, you know, that being played. Anyway, a very early um, uh, execution, excuse me, be played. Uh, does take out the Fat Bard, so now Curse is going to go back into effect here. Uh, Faithful Drake uh, and Wizard both have their attacks lowered. Meanwhile, Feeble opting to play both of his traps, the Aya Jitsu and Secret Dragon in hand, which we will see get activated by a Phantom Strike Paladin. So it doesn't negate the Aya Jitsu, but doesn't really stop the Secret Dragon from happening. And of course, we see the stronger of the uh, pool coming out in the form of Green Drake. It do a good chunk of damage on it, but obviously not remove it. So we'll see Feeble go ahead and take back the turn now. Uh, goes for a Temple play, followed up by the I, I think Cloak of Ice. If I remember correctly, right? It does end up being Cloak, so it does end up freezing Paladin. He could have taken it out if he wanted to, um, you know, with the Green Drake to get rid of the Resolve, and then Wizard kind of followed up. But I guess didn't want to sacrifice both of those cards for an unnecessary uh, removal there. So that's fine too. We will see a murder plus a state from the one, though. Uh, so, again, trying to kind of rebuild himself a little here. And, of course, taking out that green drake uh, was, I think, necessary for him. Meanwhile, we will see a dwarven miner and eater come out from Feeble's side. Followed up by a second Aijutsu trap. And we do see the activation of an arbiter. So, going to be a little, a little bit of castle heal, excuse me. And go for the um, eater removal. Even though I think eater is going to survive wholeheartedly thanks to the Aijutsu. In that scenario, probably would have gone for the wizard, but, um, you know, I, I understand maybe if he wanted to remove the eater, if he has like a more uh, removal-based pirate crusade, which I think this deck seemingly is. I mean, we've seen backstab, we've seen execution, we've seen murder. Wouldn't be surprised if there are other cards in here that kind of facilitate that direct damage, um... Uh, or direct removal kind of feel. Uh, meanwhile, Paladin going to go ahead and take out the Dwarven Miner here, it looks like. And following up with the Frog Prince. Creating a nasty chain for himself, though. Which does mean the combination of Wizard Eater does take out Frog Prince and the Estate. And leaves Paladin pretty weakened. Uh, we will see the Warrior as well get thrown out in response. Um, Could have thrown out the Yenoroth, but I guess chose not to, which is fine. Backstab plus Church from the 1. So, again, more direct removal and Onslaught. Another piece of direct removal from Pirates. So, I I would not be surprised in the slightest if this is a removal-based Pirate Crusader. I mean, maybe taking a little bit of inspiration off the no interaction at that point. Potentially. I mean, I would certainly be curious to see that, but I digress. Another Mercenary's Execution. Onto the Trapdoor Ninja Armory, forcing a 
uh, response from both Wizard and the remaining guard if they want to remove the Paladin here. Might of the Minotaur, I assume, is probably going to get played. I don't see a reason as to throwing Yenaroth just yet. You don't want to waste his freeze. Uh, and yeah, we do see Might of the Minotaur go down. Uh, so, fair enough. Uh, so going back to the one now, pardon my big stretch energy. Uh, Cannoneer comes out now, looks like, followed up by the Manfish. They're going to try and make a push for Castle there, seeing as how Feeble has no bo uh, units on board. That will probably most likely lead to Yenaroth being played now. Yep, there he is. So Yenaroth coming out, freezing the rest of the board here. And, of course, uh, making a charge for the castle. Meanwhile, the um, the church kind of doing its job here. Healing up the castle. Uh, kind of uh, trying to, excuse me, negate that sudden death. We do see uh, the second and third copy of Onslaught being played onto the Yenaroth here. Followed by a Master Thief, which isn't able to deal the final blow. So Feeble does get to use his Yenaroth for an additional turn. Which I assume he's probably going to go for a Cloak of Ice here to kind of freeze off. Yep, kind of freeze and give himself more of a lightning chain set up here on this board uh faithful drake moved i think out of position i'm not sure if that was intentional or a misclick uh but yeah it looks like yenaroth and dragonite gonna do some chain damage potentially although knockout another piece of um pirate removal uh comes out does weaken the yenaroth to where the bleed will be able to take him out followed by a shaman and bridge troll uh, and yeah, I think Feeble's gonna start to run out of options here, or run out of potential moves. We do see the Dragonite take to the offensive, do a little bit of that chain action that I was alluding to earlier. Following up with a Koru and Miner, and of course the Faithful Drake out of position, so it can't really finish off Manfish or the Master Thief, which is a bit problematic, I think, for Feeble. He needs to remove some things here, trying to even out the odds, but, uh, anyway. We do see the, uh, uh, Might of the Minotaur, excuse me, get activated for the Manfish here. He does... I uh, find the Koru in that instance, but uh, meanwhile, looks like he will remove the Miner. Serpent Witch gets played to block the buildings, inspire for more units. Uh, I believe Kanir moves out of the way, yep, and of course, Korra, no, not Koru, Shaman charges in. I just want to take a moment uh, to kind of go back here to point out that, um, as I kind of uh, rewind just a little bit, I probably could use these, but right here, right here. Um, something that I noted during this matchup here is that the... The one could have taken out both units on in front of Castle. Uh, even if he didn't know where Koru was, he could have an opportunity to take out both. Um, he could have used the Master Thief and the Shaman to trade with the Miner. And of course, the Manfish having that 3-1 could have taken out the Faithful Drake. Just a note I would like to kind of point out here. Uh, I'm not sure if maybe it was intentional for him to use the Manfish to try and find the Koru. Um, but... Um, yeah, he could have had a much better board clear, I think, if he went for the Thief and Shaman on the Miner and followed up with the Manfish on the Faithful Drake. Just, just, a, just a point I would like to mention there. But anyway, going back into the matchup here, we do see guards get played. Oh, I hit the pause button again. Um, I do see the guards being played there. That does mean Faithful Drake and uh, one of those guards will take out Shaman. Another guard moves in front of the castle. Secret Dragon being played. So he's going to try and, I guess, move this Koru up. He does move it up. So I think he's trying to trigger the trap to kind of generate a new unit for himself. We'll see how the one responds. Following up with a knockout onto the Koru. Uh-oh, that's pretty not good for uh, the Feeble here. Um, I don't know why. Do I keep saying the Feeble? I think it's because I have the one. So I have the option. You know, I have the urge to say the Feeble. Anyway. Uh, Mordok lunging attack looks to be the play to make here. Uh, yep, there it is. So you're probably going to hit the Cannoneer, which will generate a unit that could take out the Armory, which is going to be Wraith. So yep, there goes Armory. Doesn't kill the Cannoneer, though, which is unfortunate. But he does remove the Armory, which I think is an okay uh, uh, takeaway. Reclaim onto the Temple, though, from the one, followed by a last stand onto that Cannoneer. So yeah, things are looking a bit more problematic as the match goes on for Feeble here. Uh, especially with the Ice Drake being taken out instantly by that Cannoneer there. Uh, Witch going ahead, stunning the Wraith. Berserker going to go ahead and do a little bit of chip for some stat buffs. Uh, the Paladin going to move in, do some additional damage here. And yeah, I don't really think there's going to be much that um, Feeble can do here to bring himself back from this match. Master Thief going to go ahead and be aggressive right there. Uh, I think Feeble's only chance... Uh, I mean, he could play Mordok. I think he's going to go for Lar uh, Yarm Lunging though. Yeah, it will be Larm, uh, Yarm, Larm, Yarm lunging. Does not push back the Paladin, which is very curious. I don't know if that was the intended interaction, but I think it's going to be the game because uh, Bridge Troll going to deal a bit of damage here from the chain. Paladin going to do, and that's, yeah, that'll probably be enough to end it. So, Feeble going to surrender, and uh, the one takes away the win here. 
very nicely done. I'm kind of confused as to why that interaction did not go through. Uh, I do think maybe Arm should have pushed it back unless First Strike nullifies that. Um, but yeah, I think that's the first time I've seen that interaction happen. Not sure if that's intentional or not. Uh, but anyway, uh, regardless, uh, one, the war, excuse me, the one, make a nice comeback here, pulling himself together despite all the traps uh, thrown at him with a very, very removal-heavy Pyro Crusader deck. So, very curious to see if maybe that was inspired by no interaction inside, like, a Pyro Crusader variant. Uh, but regardless, great match. Let's go ahead and jump to our final one now to see what those players have in store. Alright, so for our final match, it will be Buffman with the Warlock Viking taking on Kurt with the Warlock Pirate. Uh, we'll see how this goes. I'm not sure what either of them are rocking. I mean, possibly early aggro rush from Buffman, but we'll just have to see. Uh, we do see uh, Kurt's side of things, though, so not able to kind of look in Buffman's hand for that. We do see a bunch of early stuff, though, from Kurt. Fear, Daggerstorm, Blacksmith. Uh, we'll see if that's going to be the, uh, the way he goes here. Going to go for a Fear, it looks like, pushing back the Salahar Soldier. Does get a Witch Ball for himself, which is going to be nice for some removal action there. Meanwhile, Buffman going to go ahead and advance the Soldier, followed up by the Flame as well. Smart not to put it uh, directly forward there, because we would have lost the Soldier because of that. Going to Witch Bolt, though, uh, on Kurt's side of things. Going to go ahead and remove the Salahar, giving way for Daggerstorm to be more effective in taking out the Primordial Flame. So, effectively nullifying both of those units. Uh, Buffman going to go ahead and respond with the Rider. Obviously going to push Flame up, even though Flame's not going to do too much. I speak too soon there. As the um, Battle Ready comes in. Gonna, so, forcing Kurt to kind of respond with the Blacksmith here to take out this Primordial Flame before it really does any more damage. Uh, so... Interesting there that he kind of chooses to waste the battle ready, though, on an already dying unit. Does give uh, Buffman the opportunity, though, to go into a Lava Font after hitting with Ryder, followed up by the Salahar Soldier. So, very interesting there. Uh, Furnace Fire, 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 Fire Knight going to go ahead and uh, chip a little bit of that Lava Font, despite it's going to do some damage anyway to both uh, the Furnace Knight and the castle. So, curious there. Meanwhile, it looks like Salahar Soldier going to go ahead Follow up with a ludicrous strength and hit castles. So yeah, very aggressive deck from Buffman here. We do see the Furnace Knight doing a little bit of additional damage onto um, that Lava Fawn here. But it looks like it's going to be the Blacksmith. Followed up by a Sacrifice of the Furnace Knight. Followed up by a Grotesque Offering of Blacksmith. So he's going to let the Soldier do a little bit more chip. And guards would have been hella useful. Uh, to kind of do that finishing blow onto the soldier. Uh, but it looks like Soldier going to go ahead and do the additional 5. Pulling in the swords as well. Which we do know Kurt has removal for. So not too worrying there. Uh, so one guard to go ahead and chip away the soldier. Following up uh, for, uh, with the fencer. That will be enough to take out the dancing swords. So yeah, again... You Looks like uh, Buffman rocking the early aggro deck here, or a deck very focused on aggression and just in-your-face kind of action. We do see a Swordsman going to go ahead and try to run down the line there, but Execution will take it out. Giving Guard the ability to kind of safely move one step forward and see if he can maybe poke the castle a little bit there. We do see a War Elephant from Buffman. Alright, so going to try and do some finishing blows here. We do see the Blue Fire Bolt, though, which will probably be used, yes it is, to take out the War Elephant. Does give Guard the opportunity to kind of chip away at the castle there. We do see a Armory followed up by a Sea Witch uh, for the rest of Kurt's play. And yeah, that does make sense. He's going to try and generate some additional units here. Maybe a Skeleton for Grotesque Offering. Although, Swords are going to be very tough to get around. Uh, with the current cards in Kurt's hand, yeah, not going to be enough. He's going to try, I think. He has to try to draw a, uh, a burn here. Going to sacrifice one of the skeletons to do so. Do is pull a Darkbender and White Knight. I don't think that's what he was looking for. So, he follows up with Darkbender uh, and Darkbender. Uh, not to where Buffman can reach, obviously, it looks like. But uh, we will see that's not going to be the case. Buffman going to go ahead and use the Winds of the North to pull in the Darkbender to... Uh, pull that in, pull everything close in, cleave the castle, and win the game. Very nicely done by Buffman, using that wins to his advantage there, pulling the castle in for the finishing blow. Um, that was pretty much the highlight of this match, I think, for me personally. I do think, uh, though, that, um, you know, early aggression, especially in Viking Pirate, uh, but no, not Viking Pirate, Viking Warlock, very, very, you know, um, known combo. Uh, for that deck, or for for that 
archetype, I guess is a proper way to say it. Uh, so yeah, not surprised to see Buffman taking that uh, early aggression here for the win. And obviously it looks like Kurt didn't have the resources to kind of defend properly. And that's where you see kind of starting to fall apart. I think if maybe Kurt did take out the soldier, he would have had a better chance at surviving. Maybe had a few more options to play up his sleeve. But yeah, ultimately not going to be the case here. So again, congrats for Bob and Buffman for the win. A great match by both players. And yeah, I think that's going to be the end of this video. So let's go ahead and uh, close up this video right now. Alright guys, with that being said, I hope you did enjoy this video. Let me know what you guys thought of the match by leaving your thoughts down in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy, be sure to like the video, share with friends, of course, subscribe if you are new or haven't done so already. It is the best way to support the channel and help us grow. And uh, yeah, with that being said, guys, until next time, stay gaming.